Hey everybody, Merlin Silver here, back once again and sending you guys some warm, creative vibes from a cold winter's morning here in Denmark. So here at Warp Academy, we love Max for Live, and we feel like there's a whole bunch of devices out there that really haven't been given the love and attention they deserve. So over the next few videos, we're going to shine a light on some of our favorite devices, both show you guys how they work and also show you how you can apply their unique and individual features to the context of making music. So to kick things off, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the synthesizer known as Poly. So strap right in and let's get right to it. So, Poly is one of three new Max for Live synthesizers that were added to Live's Canon in version 9.5. I've used multiple instances here to sketch out this little jam, and I'm making this project file available to you all so you can have a deeper look at the different ways I've used this awesome device. Let's kick things off by having a listen. Cool, so what we're dealing with here is an analog modelled polyphonic synth full of warmth and character. It's a super versatile device and the sounds coming out of it remind me of the classic Roland synths like the Juno 60 and the SH-101. The layout here should be fairly familiar if you've already played around with bass. Vespers did an excellent video on this a little while back, so you can check out the link in the description if you haven't seen that yet. We are presented with five different sound sources to blend together. The result of this blending is displayed in this oscilloscope. First up, we have three analog modelled oscillators. Saw, which is a saw wave. Pulse, which is a square wave. And sub, which is a sine wave at either one or two octaves below the other oscillators. The pitch of the saw can be modulated by the pulse oscillator using this X mod value, resulting in anything from gentle width to crazy textures. The pulse width of the square wave can be modulated with this value, affecting the timbre of the sound. Ring creates a sound by ring modulating the square wave with a sine wave of a given frequency. This can be adjusted using the freak parameter. And also by the pitch of incoming notes using the key parameter. Noise, as the name suggests, is a white noise oscillator, which is really useful for layering. Next up we have the filter section, comprising of both a low and high pass filter and a resonance control. The low pass filter can be modulated in three separate ways, making this a really performative device. Key, or note pitch, velocity amount, and aftertouch can all be dialed in to affect the sound in your patch. The filter envelope section here uses non-linear curves to give it a distinct character from what you might experience in other devices. The envelope parameter here applies the envelope to the filter in a positive or negative manner. Further manipulation of the sound can be achieved in the modulation section. A host of modulation options are presented to us via a small matrix of menus and parameters as well as assigning parameters like pulse width or pitch to a syncable LFO, we can repurpose the filter envelope using these menus. Over to the master section then, and we can dial in the range of the steps affected by pitch bend information. We can also decide if we want this to affect all the oscillators or just the saw. Below this we have detuning options. We can detune the pulse by whole steps and the saw by sense. This configuration can result in a very wide range of sounds. A bit of random panning can be dialed in for a bit more stereo activity. Finally, we have an ADSR envelope for shaping the amplitude of your patch. The built-in chorus is the real icing on the cake. 
Each of these three modes take me straight back to some classic sounds from the 80s and 90s. Mode A is a soft, almost guitar pedal-like chorus, while Mode B notches it up a bit to give us classic, shimmering and iconic sounds. Mode C is an overdone, detuned wonder, reminding me of classic drum and bass and rave tracks. All of these modes i found are really an absolute joy to mix into larger arrangements, with minimum harshness and lovely mid-range. Let's take a look then at how I've put these options into action in the context of my track. I've built a few racks here, but I want to hone in on these bright dancing chords and have a closer look. First off, I've mapped the amplitude envelope to one macro, so I can easily move between a staccato or legato expression of my MIDI note. This warp macro slowly introduces a pitch envelope in case I want to introduce some drastic or subtle movement to the pitch of my sound. This high pass dance is simply an LFO on my high pass filter, which can help free up space if I introduce another sound in the mid range later on. Filter envelope does exactly what it says on the tin, controlling the envelope parameter. I've mapped the low pass filter to a macro here, and over here I've added some stock effects to my chain to create a fade out option. Finally, more pulse adds a little bit more pulse wave to the mix. Great, let's hear my sound in the context of the track one last time. Great stuff. So that was just one of the ways you can take advantage of this unique and classic synth and make some shimmering, beautiful chords. So in my next video, we're going to be soldiering on and taking a look at multi. But for now, that's about all we got time for today. So until next time, I've been Merlin Silver and this is Warp Academy. Thanks for watching.